the forest tradition places a huge emphasis on looking after the monastery. A lot of the John Munn students said that when they first met him, they were going through the forest and finally came to the place where he was staying, and they were struck by how clean it was, how orderly it was. And it indicated the state of his mind. It was a clean and orderly mind. So keep remembering that the way you look after the place outside is teaching you good lessons about what you need to do inside. We don't have a monk with a clipboard here assigning jobs. Because when you're doing meditation, who's, who has the clipboard in your mind telling you that you've got to watch out for this, watch out for that? You're the one who has to see, get a sense if something is wrong, and then try to use your ingenuity to figure it out. We've got the basic principles. They've all been laid out. Lots of Dharma talks, lots of books, essays. There's plenty of information you could draw on, but a huge amount of the meditation has to do with your own ingenuity, figuring out what to do. And a good way to practice your ingenuity is to look around you outside, see what needs to be done. You may have the idea that you have certain jobs that are your jobs, and you, that's your only responsibility here. But the monastery has a fluctuating population. When some of the monks go and some of the lay people go, we begin to realize that what they were doing to look after the place. And if you have any intelligence at all, you figure, well, maybe if anybody else is stepping in, I'll step in. Because that's how we learn the good habits that we're going to need as meditators, sometimes doing things more than required. I mean, all that's required for meditation for a lot of people is simply to get through the meditation comfortably. It counts as a good meditation. But remember, the Buddha did a lot more than was required. That's how he became Buddha. All the great Ajans did more than was required. That's how they became great Ajans. So look around. There's always work to be done, always things to be cleaned up, especially after a big event like last night. So take that as a lesson, and then remember your lessons. There are some of the things that should have been done to prepare for the event last night that just weren't done. And for people who have never been here before, that's understandable. But for a lot of us, this was not the first circumambulation we had. And some people just kind of showed up at the last minute and said, Okay, here I am. That's not how the monastery runs well. You go early and you look around. See what's lacking. If somebody else has missed what's lacking, well, you you see it, and you can take care of it. That's how you develop the good qualities of a good meditator. Someone who does more than what has to be done. I mean, the Buddha didn't have to become Buddha. It was something he wanted. Once he wanted it, he realized there are things he's going to have to do. There's that saying that the great way is not difficult for those with no preferences. And that doesn't mean that you don't prefer an end of suffering over suffering. You do prefer the end of suffering, but you look at what needs to be done. And you don't try to squeeze the path or turn the path in the direction of your preferences. You try to shave away your preferences to make way for the path inside. That's how you get results.